Hi folks. The way we make our fixture plates is sometimes we do a precarious op zero setup where we are barely holding on to the plate. And we ran into a problem that actually may have been unrelated, but what we wanted to do was we wanted to probe the raw material uh, after every operation to see if it moved. And I thought we should be able to do this. And we have these relatively expensive, accurate CNC machines that have pretty darn good probes. I just wanna keep testing a spot to see if it's in the same location. Um, but I don't wanna actually update or move my main coordinate system uh, that's driving my part, you know, the G54. And we figured it out. It's actually, it's not that hard, but it also wasn't intuitive. Um, and so I wanted to walk through the workflow to do that. Uh, the, what I love about this is it's clean. There's no hand edits. There's no relying on hand typing. Um, it's not perfect. You'll see there's a couple things I wish could be even better about it, but it's a pretty cool thing, whether it's for what we're doing here uh, on testing or Grimsman and I have been talking a lot about heat treat parts and how parts can to move throughout a machining process. Certainly uh, higher stress materials, this will definitely happen. Um, or even crazier scenarios like vacuum work holding or super glue, where you just want to probe to make sure the part hasn't uh, slightly shifted or completely gone away. We have a raw material, and in this case, I'm doing G54 on the top center of the stock. It doesn't matter where that is. What we want to do is this point to recheck. That's kind of the, the key to this whole workflow was, does it matter where that point is? I happen to pick this spot right here, but I'm kind of telling Fusion in the machine, hey, I'm gonna pick this point. I want you to check it before we start working. And then as every time I want to recheck it, I want you to tell me if that point has moved. So here's the key to do that. And then we're gonna go a little bit backward in how I set this up. The point to recheck operation is just a probe work coordinate system operation. So you have that under setup, probe WCS. And what I'm doing is picking the face, I'm using a selected point. I wanna have it specifically hit this point right here. By the way, this is one of the things that isn't perfect in Fusion. Um, it doesn't actually let me parametrically link to the point you see here. It's sort of just wherever I click my mouse cursor, which is not ideal, um, especially in this situation because we're actually doing this off of saw cut edges. And so if my next point was uh, 10 thou over to the left, the saw cut probably will be a little bit different there, but you get my point. With one major change, if I just did this operation as a probe WCS right here, it would actually be moving my G54. I don't wanna do that. Uh, our saw cut plate is 50 thou to 100 thou oversized. I always want G54 to stay in the center uh, the way our workflow happens. But also, on stuff like this with probing, I want to test stuff. I never want my probing results to change my coordinate system that could lead to a crash. So the key to that is this last tab, actions, override driving work coordinate system. The coordinate system that it's using is G54. What does that mean? It means because Saunders always puts the coordinate system at the top center of this plate, it's going to find this point in space based on G54, but you'll see here, it's actually going to update uh, to what I'm calling a bogus coordinate system, G154, P47. It's a random Haas offset that we don't use, um, and that's fine, it's a, it's a throwaway offset, if you will. How did we get that to happen? This is kind of one of the tricks to this video. If you right click on any operation, and you say add to new folder, it ends up that folder and pattern are kind of the same thing. Click add to folder, it's now in a folder, and when you double click that folder, you can change the coordinate system of operations within that folder. So I'm gonna cancel this, undo this, because I've got that folder right here. And that folder is 47. So the three probing operations that are in this will be driven by G54, but they're actually gonna update P47. We need the X and we need the Z uh, for reasons you'll see here in a second. So you go up to a machine, that's the first thing we do. We probe these three points and we've now populated P47. Great. We can then do all of our machining, you know, maybe facing, hogging, roughing, finishing the edges, whatever you want to do. And anytime you want to come back to check on the part, we'll do this recheck operation. So this is a probe geometry operation. You find that under inspection, probing, probe geometry. What we're doing here is pretty simple. We pick that same point, wrong size. If it is the wrong size, what I want to do, I want to stop with a message. What 
tells Fusion if it's the wrong size. The third tab here, geometry, feature, tolerance, I'm gonna say four thousandths of an inch. So that's pretty cool. That means subject to whatever tolerance I want, four thousandths of an inch in this case, I can come back and recall this probing operation and it's gonna come in, touch off that point in Y, and in this video example, if I just put a piece of tape over it to simulate that we're now out of tolerance, the machine will stop. I forgot to clarify that that probe geometry function is also in a folder, and that folder is also set to the 47 offset. And that is the reason why previously, when we first established the point to check, we also have to probe the X and the Y. I wish we didn't, but you have to establish the full X, Y, and Z values that offset. That way, when we come back later to probe just that one point, it's using the full P47 values, X, Y, and Z, to know where to come in to touch off and just evaluate whether it's in or out of tolerance. As always, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.